Okay, here's another pattern in the fly time with monofilament series. Uh, this is a small size 20, size 18, depending on the hook manufacturer. It's about a quarter of an inch hook. Uh, it's a dry fly hook. This fly, because of its materials, will probably stay in the top surface film. It's not going to be a true dry fly, which floats above the surface. Uh, it's a very effective pattern and as far as realistic flies go it's uh, one of the more simple patterns. Uh, I'll put a little coin up here for scale you can see how small the fly is. The fly only has a couple of components. It's um, three different sizes of monofilament and uh, thread. The coloration, uh, we're going to use white thread and the coloration is acquired uh, through adding markers. <clears throat> so if you're ready, we'll load a hook and we'll get started. Okay, with the, flies, with the hook securely in the vise, we're going to tie on with our 060 thread. I'm going to grab about halfway down the bend and the back up. You can see we started at the back one third of the hook. And this is where our abdomen is going to go. And we don't want to put thread anywhere else. Uh, we don't want to start at the eye and work our way back because we want to keep the amount of thread build up down to a minimum. Now I'm going to tie on a piece of 25 pound monofilament. And I'm using a lot bigger piece than what I truly need so, because it's just so much easier to handle a larger piece of monofilament than a smaller one. And I'm going to go ahead and bend it around and bring it to the end of my thread here. But I want to go ahead and cut it now. So it's easier to bend and manage. And that's our basic abdomen. <clears throat> now to give the abdomen a little more <clears throat> of an ovoid shape instead of uh, the flat looking piece of mono sitting on there. We're going to add a smaller thinner piece of monofilament. Uh, the one on top is a 25 pound piece and we're going to add a uh, piece of 17 pound monofilament to each side and this will change the direction of the thread and it'll also give us a better shaped abdomen Okay, now you can continue to build this up a little bit with thread if it's not exactly the shape you want. But we're going to go ahead and get our abdomen in there. Okay, at this point we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of color. This is a Copic marker. It is dark bark. It's just a very dark brown. It almost looks black. And 
and I suppose you could use a black marker it's not going to make that big difference this is just a little more true to the actual color of the insect and then I'm going to put a dollop of head cement on there to seal the color in <clears throat> and finish off the abdomen okay so now we're going to add the legs the legs are tied out of one pound monofilament and they're tied to the underneath of the hook now one thing to remember when you start to add the legs is that we want to leave enough room at the eye of the hook to add the head so visualize that you're going to have the three legs and then make up the thorax and then a tiny space between the thread to have a neck which will just basically be the bare hook shank and then build up a little head <clears throat> before the hook eye so that's going to mean we need to have these legs sitting just about on top of each other with just maybe a, a small space between it. So we're going to start up against the abdomen. With about a three inch piece of one pound tippet. I'm going to tie it over and around from both directions. We want to leave about a one inch piece. With about a half inch on either side. And then we want to tie the next set of legs. Or piece of one inch monofilament. Almost on top of it. And finally, our third set of legs. Next to those. Okay, the next thing is to move the thread to the eye of the hook and to build up a ball of thread to create the head of the fly. And this is a small hook with a, a very small head, so you don't want to encroach the eye of the hook any more than you have to. Be mindful of your thread that uh, you still leave yourself plenty of room to tie your tippet on. And there we go. We want to build up the head. To close to the size that you want finished, but we still have to add on the antenna. The antenna we're going to make out of 4M monofilament tying thread. So we'll take a, a piece big enough to handle. maybe about an inch long 
and we're going to tie it directly to the top of this thread head. And that is easier said than done. Okay, to make this a little easier, we're going to go ahead and add some marker color to the head and the thorax. And this is, I don't know if I can get that in there, Burnt Sienna Copic Marker E09. E09. Okay, the reason I added the color in there is because I want to add a little drop of head cement to first secure the antenna in place. So I'm going to put a drop of head cement on top and put the antenna on the head cement so that will kind of hold it in place until we can secure it with thread wraps. Like so. And we'll give that a second to dry. Okay, now that I've given it a little time for the head cement to hold that, I should be able to hold some of the legs back out of the way and get this antenna wrapped in. it's wrapped in we're going to wrap back through the legs build up the abdomen a little bit with thread wraps and then we can whip finish So once again, I'm going to touch up this color. Add just a little dot or two of head cement to protect the thread and to seal in the color. And then we can shake the legs and the antenna. Shaping the legs and the antenna are probably the most important aspect of making this fly look realistic. As you see it now, it resembles a small ant, but it, it doesn't really look alive. To bend the legs enough, antenna we're going to use a botkin or in this case a needle to uh, heat up and <coughs> use it to heat kink the legs so into a position they'll stay to do this we're simply going to take a, a needle I have this one into a bamboo uh, skewer so that it holds it uh, and we're just going to apply a lighter to the tip and heat it for a couple of seconds 
to uh, heat kink the legs. And I'll show you how that works. So the first bend is going to be to bend the leg up as it leaves the body. And I'm going to start with the pair of back legs and I'm going to bend them both up. And then I'm going to bend what would be their knee joint down. Okay, and they have one more ankle bend. just going to cut these two pieces definitely okay I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause the camera here and bend the other two sets of legs and then we'll do the antenna okay so I've uh, bent the legs and I've added a little bit of color so mainly it for its it's easier for y'all to see uh, this leg you can tell doesn't have enough color there we go now one thing to uh, keep in mind when uh, heat kinking this monofilament uh, you want to kind of get a system down what I do is I will experiment with a piece of monofilament in a different needle size and I'll heat the the needle and count 1001 and then try it against a piece of monofilament that I'll be using to see if it's adequate heat to bend and set the the joint if it's not then I'll attempt again but this time I'll you know I'll count again and I'll repeat that process till I find out how much I, I need to heat that needle uh, to correctly bend the monofilament without burning through it. You don't want to just randomly heat at different lengths and then try it against a flying device. If you burn off a leg you're done. Uh, using a piece of scrap material in the same size that you're going to be using it is a much smarter idea. Okay so uh, on this one pound monofilament, and this is a fairly thin needle, I was heating it for a count of 1002. Uh, the antenna, which is quite a bit smaller than the one pound monofilament, uh, I'm probably going to go a little bit less than that. Um, so, uh, one good thing about it, if you don't add enough heat, you can always heat it up and try again. Uh, if you had too much heat in first, then you burn through and you're done. So we're going to try to, to shape the antenna here.
And of course, any of your your bins or your antenna, anything that you're not happy with, you can go back and rebend it. And I think we need to add just a little more head seam in underneath to protect those threads, but otherwise the ant has done. For a realistic pattern, this is this is a fairly simple pattern. Uh, it incorporates a few techniques you'll use on just about every other uh, fly that I tie, you know, as far as incorporating the, the abdomen with monofilament thread. Uh, Sometimes we substitute deer hair uh, for just simply monofilament and thread so that we can get some buoyancy, uh, especially on some of the larger patterns like the bees and the, the wasps and, of course, crickets and, and hoppers all have deer hair because we want those to be dry flies and sit above the surface. But if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below this video. Uh, be kind. I know the video quality isn't isn't that great. Uh, I'm just learning how to do videos. Hopefully there'll be more to follow. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, any other fly patterns you'd like to see me do. Uh, I think the next one I have planned is going to be the blue crab or the crawfish. One of the two. I want to put those on video to help y'all. Uh, those that want to try to you know venture into realistic time so let me know what you'd like to see and uh, we'll try to do some more videos thanks